Hey everybody, what's up? Hope you're doing great. This is Jack and welcome to Guitar Elevation, the channel that is all about helping you elevate your guitar playing so you can play anything you dream of. And today we're dreaming of playing bar chords pain-free and playing them consistently well every single time. That's beautiful. All right, so that's what we're doing today. Don't you want your bar chords to feel way much easier when you play them? Or don't you want to play them without any tension and without squeezing so much on your wrist or your thumb? And don't you want to play your bar chords without any uh, buzzing sound coming out every single time you play that? You hear that? If you want to do any of those things, then this lesson is for you, all right? I promise you after this lesson, you'll be able to play them really, really well. Treat this lesson as an open buffet, meaning you take whatever you want from this lesson and you try it out. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you come back to the lesson and then you take other tips that I'm giving you and then you try them out again. I promise you, any of those 20 tips I'm giving will work. This is why you need to stick till the end because at the end, I'll also be giving you some pro tips or secret tips to keep doing that consistently well. And don't skip till the end because those 20 tips I'll be giving you are all interrelated and we'll be building this, you know, one, one step at a time. I'll be dividing those 20 tips I'll be giving you in four different parts. So part one is about, is everything about the posture, all right, in order to uh, set ourselves up for success. Part number two is all about Two and three basically is all about preventing pain and then preventing injury. Part number four, nailing this amazing bar chord sound. And then part number five is going beyond that. So if you're ready, take your favorite beverage. That coffee is hot. And, and let's go. All right, let's go. Let's do that. Part number one is all about posture in order to set ourselves up for success. This is why your guitar should have an angle of at least 30 degrees. This is not even 30 degrees, but you should at least have your guitar set up like that. Even if you're sitting on your right uh, foot, you can sit on the left foot, which is basically uh, the way it should be. But I know that most of you guys are, you know, electric guitar players or acoustic guitar players and you hate the classical position, then that's fine. You can put your guitar on the right foot, but keep the guitar leaned in a way that you'll have an angle, an upward angle. By the way, I'm using a classical guitar for this lesson because it's way harder to bar uh, on a classical guitar than it is on an electric guitar. And by the way, this guitar is older than I am. It was made in 1985, if I'm not mistaken. So just a couple years older than I am. Anyway, so guitar angled up. And number two is about posture. You need to have a straight back. So we, we, we can be playing guitar like that. All right, uh, number three is all about keeping your hand elbow, your fretting hand elbow close to the body. So you, you will not be playing bar chords like that. It's impossible. You need to keep that elbow close to your body. And number four, which is the most important thing, is to always drop your wrist, meaning your wrist should be dropped below the fretboard. We see people, you know, playing chords like that where they have their wrist all up like that and it, it doesn't work out. We need to drop the wrist or else we're gonna injure ourselves. And number five, it's all about the shoulder, especially the left hand shoulder. We don't want to be raising that shoulder. It should be loose, tension free. What you can do is you can uh, touch, your, uh, touch your shoulder with your right hand or your picking hand whenever you're barring and just to make sure that you're not tensing up every single time you want to bar. So now part number two is all about the fretting hand position in order to prevent pain. For all these examples, I'm going to use a major bar chord. What we need to do is keep the thumb always between the first and the second fingers. And preferably we need it to be in front of the uh, second finger, the middle finger. Your hand uh, should be drawing a U shape and your thumb should be always between the first and the second finger. Also, your thumb should preferably be around the fourth and third strings. So actually in the middle of the neck. Now something else about the thumb is that your thumb should be touching the back of the the neck of the guitar from the side and not from the middle. Another 
thing about the thumb is that you need to be locking the knuckle of your thumb. You cannot be playing your bar chords with a thumb like that or overextended thumb. It should, the, the knuckle should be locked and everything I said before is true. So you need to uh, keep the thumb between the first and second finger, knuckle locked and your thumb facing the neck of the guitar, the head of the guitar. Part number three is all about the neck position in order to prevent injury. Everything goes hand in hand, but here I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the, on the wrist. So here's the thing, the wrist position should be always dropped down. All right, dropped down as you can see here. And a big no-no we usually see with the students is that they pop out their thumb right here. And that's a big no-no because it's raising your wrist without you noticing this. We need to keep it as tension free as possible, as much tension free as possible. And what we need to do is don't over squeeze, okay? We need to put just enough strength to make the, the notes ring out, but not too much causing us to, you know, have pain. Cool. Part number four is all about the fingers positioning in order to nail that perfect sound. We need to play right behind the fret, just right behind the fret, not only for the first finger, but for all the other fingers as well. This will ensure a firm grip and will ensure that we won't be buzzing the strings. Great sound. Now, if you're still experiencing some buzzing after, you know, putting your finger right next to the fret, what you need to do is basically roll a little bit, your first finger, I'm talking about the index, roll it a little, a little bit to the bony side of the finger. See, the problem is from here, you have lots of flesh and flesh, as we know, is kind of soft. Whereas on the bonier side of the finger, where it's harder, we can have a firmer grip. And what's also good about the bony side of the finger is that the surface from that side of the finger is smaller and it will help us to get a better grip. So in case you're still buzzing, all you have to do is just slightly roll the first finger in order to get that beautiful sound. And one more important thing about the finger positioning is the second finger, the middle finger knuckle. What we see people do usually is that without them knowing, of course, is that this knuckle flattens out, you know, because they don't know how to put the correct pressure. What you need to do is you need to keep that knuckle curled up in order for us to divide the strength on all the fingers. Any finger that flattens out is a finger that is not working properly and therefore the other fingers need to compensate and then we, we run into all kinds of problems. Make sure this knuckle is always curled. All right, now it's part number five, which is the macro level which is seeing things from the outside. So we went into details, into the posture, into the fingers, into the wrist, into the thumb, and now we're gonna address the whole topic from, you know, the bigger picture. And seeing things from the bigger picture helps us master those bar chords. Check this out. When you're squeezing, and where you're squeezing in order to get that bar sound, what you need to be thinking about is that you're pulling all right, you're pulling from the arm and even from the back shoulder. You're pulling the strings from the arm and it's not only your fingers doing the work. That way you have more leverage. All right, and the thumb is only there for support. You shouldn't be squeezing with, with your thumb. So check that out. I will bar this A bar chord without using my thumb. Check that out. You See that? So my thumb is down there. Oops. <laughs> and that's my bar chord. Okay, that's a major bar chord. And as you see, we don't need the pressure from the thumb. The thumb is only there for support. By now, you should already have lots of tips and tactics and tricks in order to uh, get that beautiful bar sound that you want. All right, but as I promised you, I'm gonna give you some pro tips. Are you ready? Let's go. Oh no, first I need to take a sip from my favorite beverage, which is coffee. What is your favorite beverage? Let me know in the comment section below. Pro tip number one, 
So what I did just a few seconds ago is that I was pulling with my arm. And here's a trick that you can do. You can pull with your arm, which is gonna basically uh, pivot the guitar this way. But what you can do with your picking hand elbow is try to stabilize the guitar. So that way you'll have two forces, you know, countering each other. This one is taking the guitar that way and then my elbow is trying to stabilize the guitar. And this way, you can get a perfect bar sound without even using the thumb. So imagine if you have a thumb working with that as well, you're going to be able to get that amazing bar, bar chord sound every single time. Now, of course, this is a tip where if everything else did not work, you can, you can do that. All right, pro tip number two. So when we're doing a minor bar chord, what happened is I'll need to liberate this finger. So what happens when I liberate this second finger is that now my other fingers need to work more because you know, the pressure is divided on only three fingers. Not only that, but the first finger is now more overloaded and this will cause buzzing like that. But what we can do in order to, you know, remedy to that is place my second finger over the first finger and squeeze them together. So now my second finger acts as a support to the first one. And this will eradicate any kind of buzzing noise. Cool, pro tip number three. If nothing worked for you so far, then I'm sorry, but here's what you gotta do. You gotta put your footstool on the left leg, put the guitar on the left leg, and try everything we talked about, but now using a classical position. Why? Because the classical position is very, very good for your wrist. As you see, my wrist is dropped and there's no way for my wrist to raise no matter where I play. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And if you did, don't forget to like, because I want to know if you did enjoy that lesson. And if you want, if you want, you can subscribe to my channel to get more lessons on everything related to guitar. I'm happy to have spent that time with you and I'll be happy to know if I've helped you, you know, eradicate the bar chord problem that you've been having. So take care and until next time, practice well.